Hi everybody. Here's a guitar I got off of Craigslist and look at that. It has a high action on it. This is a small Fender 3 4 size guitar. The um, truss rod's okay. The belly of the guitar is okay. This needs a neck reset. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is score the edge of the fretboard to uh, break the finish so the finish doesn't act like a glue when I'm trying to remove the fretboard. And also I'm going to score the finish where the neck meets the body so that the finish doesn't act like glue there either. I probably should be using a razor blade but I'm using a very small uh, micro chisel Here's my buddy Jaden. He's helping me separate the tongue, the fretboard from the body. Um, we put an iron on it to heat it up. You know, this was very easy. It was suspiciously easy. That should have been a clue to me of what's coming, but it wasn't. <laughs> so with just a little bit of heat, there was one kind of click, and then it was just a free. Um, and I didn't have to struggle like I normally do with the wood glue slowly releasing uh, here I am um, get, uh, removing the nut with my nut removal device. So now I am uh, drilling the holes for the steam that I will use to inject into the dovetail and release the neck. Uh, normally I remove a fret to do this. Um, on my last guitar, the Yamaha FG, you're supposed to actually go about an eighth of an inch up past the fret to properly get the uh, dovetail hole. Um, Here's part of the steam machine I put together. Uh, this is a couple sizes of hose from the hardware store with a basketball inflator needle on one side. Um, if those couplings came loose, that would be a painful experience, just for what it's worth. Here's the espresso machine. Uh, the espresso machine allows me to adjust the amount of water and steam coming out, and that turns out to be a very good thing. Uh, too much water can cause the finish to cloud, it can cause the pit guard to delaminate, it could, I suppose, even cause braces to come loose in the worst case. Um, at one time this hose actually fit onto the espresso machine. <laughs> it's taking a little effort to get it on there. And uh, once I get it on there, these uh, circular clamps I will slide up and then I will uh, screw them to make sure it has a tight seal. So now it's time to put the water into the espresso machine. I'm assuming I should use distilled water uh, to not leave behind uh, calcium stains or whatever. If you've never poured water before, this is how you do it. Now where you've got the cloth ready, and we're getting ready to generate some steam and stick it in that neck. So look at me. Expert Luthier, this is all going so quickly, going so well. I must know what I'm doing. But what I don't see there, I don't see steam coming out the other hole. And I should have paid attention to that. <laughs> but I didn't. I'm, I'm very nervous about holding this uh, skin burning device and keeping water out of the guitar. Let's try the other hole. Okay, I stuck it in there. But uh, there's no steam coming out the other side. So you know what that means? That means there's no dovetail there. 
my whole approach is wrong. So I always wanted to try to do a quick neck reset. I guess I'm going to do it. I'm getting out the saw, and I feel bad about this, to be honest, because it's a nice-looking guitar. But here I go. I suppose, in theory, I could come up with some heat lamp set up to loosen that, or, or heat blanket or something, but I didn't. So um, when I'm cutting the neck, of course, I cut up and I stop where the truss rod is. So what about the wood on the side of each truss rod? How, how do I cut that? Well, I cut it very carefully. I've since purchased a saw, an uh, oscillating saw. Here you can see the wood that I've removed from the heel. That's space. That's going to now allow the neck to come in on the bottom, which rotates the neck and uh, brings it down, which will lower the action. I need to put an adjustment bolt right there on the knife edge of that wood. You know, That's not a great place for me to drill. So I'm going to cut out a little platform. I cut in about maybe a quarter to a half inch, something like that. It was too, a little too much. One eighth would have been fine probably. There's my little uh, section. And uh, I'm going to drill a couple holes. Well, I'm actually going to drill one hole. One is for the, the wood on the inside. You want it to be nice and snug. And I'm also going to drill a wider hole just for the neck part because I don't want the screw to grab onto that wood, only the inside wood. And there it is, a cheap guitar with a adjustable neck angle. That's something you uh, usually only see on expensive guitars. It uh, looks kind of bad, but I should probably paint that. I'm going to file it so that the wood does not feel sharp on my hand. Um, so far, it really doesn't bother me playing at all, so um, it's not really a concern of mine. And you can see that the uh, tongue, the part of the fretboard, is sticking up a little bit. You can see that neck angle hits the uh, is way above the bridge now. I decided to glue that part of the neck down to the body. Um, it's going to create a little bit of a ramp, and that's fine. This is a level, and I put masking tape on the level, and then I super glued a strip of um, 400 grit sandpaper to the masking tape. In theory, that masking tape is going to come off again. So uh, now we, I'm going to do a fret level. The frets are very unlevel on this. Um, so I'm going to start out by using a magic marker and um, putting a black mark on the top of the frets. So before I do the uh, fret level, I'm going to make sure that the truss rod is adjusted as straight as possible and uh, the neck is as straight as possible. So now I um, start this process of gently rubbing it back and forth and then taking a look at what frets still have a uh, marker on the top. Once I get done, now they're all pretty level, but they're flat on the top, so I need to create a rounded top. I need to crown the frets. This is a special uh, magic file from Stuart McDonald, and it, if you can see on the edge there, it has kind of a semicircular shape to create a rounded top and so this is how I do it I just uh, press it against the top of the fret and this is my Stuart McDonald fret dust evacuation pneumatic system I'm using
and now since I can't find my um, triple zero steel wool uh, I'm using some 800 grit sandpaper to make the tops of the frets nice and smooth so they don't make any scratching sounds when I bend the notes <laughs> I think it sounds pretty good and I can play it way up high. Here's the final result of all this work. Uh, if you look originally um, from the factory, this came with an action of 0.240, 240 thousandths on the low, 232 on the high. And look at the uh, progress I've made 0 0.057 on the low and 49 thousandths on the high. <clears throat> um, that's a, that was a ridiculously high action that came from the factory with uh, the nut was cut very poorly I had to recut it uh, there were sharp fret ends there were uneven frets I had to do quite a bit of work on this um, I, I wish Fender didn't loan their name out to a company that's not even attempting to produce a student grade instrument but at least I was able to make it better so I hope you enjoyed this and um, find found it useful thanks <laughs>